Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about congenital uterine anomalies ultrasound reporting. You will learn how to write the findings and the impression of the ultrasound report regarding congenital uterine anomalies. The first anomaly is uterus didelphis, which is also known as double uterus. This is the example report starting with clinical information. The patient presents with a history of irregular menses and dysmenorrhea. Previous medical records indicate unexplained infertility. The pelvic ultrasound was performed transabdominally and transvaginally to evaluate the uterine structure and endometrium. These are the findings. Uterus. The uterus appears to be duplicated with two distinct uterine bodies, each with its own cervix, consistent with a diagnosis of uterus didelphis. Each uterine cavity measures approximately 7 cm in length and displays a normal myometrial echo pattern without evidence of leomyoma or focal lesion. Right uterus The right uterine body shows a normal endometrial stripe measuring 3 mm in thickness. No adnexal mass or free fluid is observed in the right adnexa. Left uterus the left uterine body similarly demonstrates a normal endometrial stripe, also measuring 3 mm. A small, simple ovarian cyst is noted on the left ovary, measuring approximately 2 cm. No significant free fluid or adnexal mass is present in the left adnexa. Ovaries both ovaries are visualized and appear normal in size and morphology. The aforementioned simple cyst is seen on the left ovary. The right ovary shows normal follicular development for the patient's menstrual cycle phase. This is the impression. Uterus didelphis with two distinct uterine bodies and services. Normal ovaries with a small simple cyst on the left ovary. No evidence of intrauterine pregnancy at the time of scan. These are recommendations which include follow-ups and referrals. Further evaluation with MRI may be beneficial for comprehensive anatomical mapping. Consideration of a fertility consultation to discuss reproductive options and management. Regular follow-up is recommended to monitor the simple cyst on the left ovary. Now we have a case of bicornuate uterus. Clinical information. The patient presents with a history of recurrent miscarriages. She has been referred for further evaluation of uterine anomalies suspected in previous pelvic examinations. These are the findings. Uterus. The uterus is irregular in shape, displaying a prominent indentation on the fundal contour that extends towards the cervical canal. Consistent with a bicornuate uterus. This configuration is characterized by two distinct uterine horns, which are well delineated in the 3D coronal view, confirming the suspicion of a bicornuate uterine anomaly. These are the uterine dimensions. Right horn measures approximately 8 cm in length and 4 cm in width. Left horn measures approximately 7.5 cm in length and 3.8 cm in width. 
The myometrial echo texture is homogeneous with no evidence of myomas or focal lesions within either uterine horn. Endometrial stripe The endometrial linings within both horns appear normal with thickness measurements consistent with the patient's face in the menstrual cycle, approximately 5 mm in both horns. Ovaries Both ovaries are visualized and appear normal in size, position, and morphology. No adnexal masses or significant free fluid is noted. This is the impression. Bicornuate uterus with two distinct uterine horns as confirmed by 3D ultrasound in the coronal view. Normal endometrial stripes within both uterine horns. No evidence of intrauterine pregnancy or abnormality within the ovaries. These are the recommendations. Given the patient's history of recurrent miscarriages, the identification of a bicornuate uterus may have clinical significance regarding future pregnancy management. It is advisable to discuss reproductive options and potential interventions with a fertility specialist. Consider a follow-up MRI for further anatomical clarification and to assist in planning for any surgical intervention if deemed necessary. Schedule regular prenatal monitoring in the event of future pregnancies to manage potential complications associated with the bicornuate uterus. Now we have a report of unicornuate uterus, clinical information, the patient presents for evaluation due to primary infertility and a history of irregular menstrual cycles. Previous assessments suggested a possible congenital uterine anomaly. These are the findings. Uterus. The uterus is observed to be smaller than normal with a single horn, indicating a unicornuate uterus. This configuration lacks the typical pear shape, appearing elongated and curved. The 3D coronal view distinctly showcases the absence of the second uterine horn, confirming the unicornuate nature of the uterus. Uterine dimensions The single horn measures approximately 6 cm in length and 2.5 cm in width. The myometrial echo pattern is homogeneous without evidence of myomas or focal abnormalities. Endometrial stripe The endometrium within the visible uterine horn appears thin and regular, measuring approximately 3 mm in thickness which is consistent with the patient's reported phase in the menstrual cycle. The ovaries appear normal. This is the impression. Unicornuate uterus with a single horn visualized, confirmed by both standard and 3D ultrasound in the coronal view. Normal ovarian appearance with no evidence of associated anomalies or masses. No evidence of intrauterine pregnancy at the time of the examination. Recommendation Consideration for additional imaging such as MRI for comprehensive assessment of renal anomalies commonly associated with congenital uterine abnormalities. This is a report for septate uterus. Clinical information. The patient reports a history of infertility and recurrent pregnancy loss. Technique includes standard and 3D ultrasound. 
These are the findings. The uterus appears normal in size and myometrial echo texture. However, a deep septation is identified extending from the fundus towards the cervical canal, dividing the uterine cavity into two distinct compartments, which is characteristic of a septate uterus. This observation is particularly evident in the 3D ultrasound images, where the septum's length and orientation are clearly depicted. Septum details. The septum is noted to be approximately 4 cm in length, comprising a mix of fibrous and muscular tissue, as suggested by its echogenicity. It extends almost the entire length of the uterine cavity. Endometrial stripe The endometrial lining within each compartment appears symmetric and normal in thickness measuring approximately 3 mm, which is appropriate for the patient's menstrual cycle phase. Both the ovaries are normal in size and morphology. This is the impression, septate uterus with a significant intrauterine septum dividing the uterine cavity into two compartments. Normal ovarian morphology with no evidence of adnexal pathology. These are the recommendations. An MRI of the pelvis could be considered for further delineation of the uterine anatomy and septum characteristics. Close follow up is advised, particularly if surgical intervention is pursued to monitor for potential complications and to assess for improvements in reproductive outcomes. This is a report for arcuate uterus. Clinical information. The patient presents for evaluation of uterine morphology as part of an infertility assessment. There is no significant past medical or surgical history reported. These are the findings. The uterus is antiverted and appears normal in size. However, there is a slight smooth indentation seen at the fundus, consistent with an arcuate uterus. The 3D imaging, especially in the coronal view, clearly demonstrates the mild concavity at the uterine fundus without evidence of a deep septum distinguishing this morphology from a septate uterus. Uterine dimensions, approximately 8 cm in length, 5 cm in width, and 4 cm in depth. The myometrium exhibits homogeneous epotexture without evidence of leomyomas or focal abnormalities. Endometrial stripe the endometrial lining appears uniform and measures 4 mm in thickness, which is within normal limits for the patient's menstrual cycle phase. Both the ovaries are normal. Here is the impression. An arcuate uterus is identified with a characteristic mild fundal concavity noted on both standard and 3D ultrasound imaging without evidence of a septum extending into the uterine cavity. Normal ovarian morphology and activity with no pelvic pathology identified. Recommendations The arcuate uterine configuration is considered a variant of normal uterine anatomy and typically does not require intervention. It is unlikely to significantly impact fertility or pregnancy outcomes. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more 
imaging videos.